Meat Boy is back. Today we are going to make some raw yogurt, one of the most important foods for restoring your gut microbiome. You know, other dairy products like kefir, which is a fermented drink, tend to be too high in probiotics and can actually make your gut worse initially. And things like cheese are high in histamines, high in salt, very high in calcium, not the easiest on the stomach. Yogurt tends to be the best of both worlds. It has a nice balance of probiotic bacteria. It has some carbohydrates in the form of lactose to feed that bacteria. It doesn't contain an incredible amount of histamines and it doesn't have salt. So if you're having gut issues and want to incorporate dairy, yogurt is really the best bet. And I would argue in most cases that yogurt is the only high quality probiotic food that people can actually use to heal their gut. Any dairy product, if made from raw grass-fed dairy, is going to be super nutritious. The only nutrients missing in high amounts are iron, as well as preformed omega-3s. They do have alpha-linolenic acid, but your body has to convert that. So dairy will have you know, most of the vitamins, most of the minerals, most of the elements, even iodine if the cow is on the right pasture. The raw yogurt we're making today has not been heated above 110 degrees. You know, raw is technically below 117. Some people might say that enzymes are degraded at like 96, 97. We're going to keep the yogurt around that temperature, but you can't activate a yogurt culture at a raw temperature. I've tried making yogurt at like 80 and 85 degrees. The cultures just don't activate. So we're gonna use a dehydrator to try to keep the temperature as low as possible. Let's get started. As simple as this whole process is, the most difficult part is obtaining the raw grass-fed dairy. Here I have some goat milk from a local farm, and here I have some goat yogurt from a previous batch. If you don't have access to raw yogurt from a local farm, you can use a store-bought yogurt for the initial culture as we only need one tablespoon per cup of milk. I really suggest only consuming dairy if you do have raw grass-fed dairy. You know, if you go to Whole Foods, they might have some organic grass-fed stuff that's pasteurized. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's just, it doesn't have as much probiotics. It doesn't digest as well. So I'm gonna pour about half a gallon of milk into this pot. And half a gallon of milk will make roughly twice as much as this much yogurt. I said you only need one tablespoon of yogurt per cup of milk, but I usually just, you know, put some of my last batch in there to simplify things. This is way more yogurt than you need. The whole process will just happen a little bit quicker. Then I mix this up. And now I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap because the dehydrator that we're using blows hot air and it can make the top a little bit dry. Also, you know, we don't want any bugs getting in this. Although it is the winter, if you try making something like yogurt during the summer, you'll definitely get some flies in here, you know, various insects laying eggs. So just to be safe, we'll put some plastic on top. Of course, you could use a towel or something else, but since the plastic isn't going to be in direct contact with the yogurt, I'm not too worried about any chemicals leaching into it. So let's bring this down to the dehydrator. This is a dehydrator that I bought several years ago to make jerky. I think it was 200 or $250. If you don't have a dehydrator, you could try putting the yogurt in your boiler room. If it's not hot enough in there, you can put the oven on the lowest heat possible keep the oven door open and put the yogurt in it. The only thing you're gonna have to do is constantly check on the yogurt to see what temperature it's reaching using an instant read thermometer. So then if the yogurt is exceeding a certain temperature, you know, you can take it out, let it cool off, put it back in. But seeing as, you know, this yogurt making is a fairly long process, you know, anywhere from 12 to 24 hours, depending on how active the culture is and what the temperature is, that is a little bit tedious to do. So all we have to do here is, you know, take our pot of milk and yogurt, put it in the dehydrator. I'm gonna close this. I put this on 105 degrees. I've tried making this before on the lowest temperature and it didn't work. So dehydrator is on 105. That means that the yogurt's gonna get to like 99, 98. Whenever you're cooking something or dehydrating something, it never gets to the actual temperature of what the dehydrator is at. It's always a little bit below that. Uh, so now I'm gonna set the timer to the max time, 26 hours. And we'll come back and check on this. 
You know, if this goes for five, six, seven, eight, ten hours longer, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the flavor isn't going to change too much. It's not like it's going to go bad or anything. The yogurt has been going for about 24 hours. We're going to turn this off just so it's nice and quiet and take the temperature. So the yogurt is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, but this looks good. It's nice and thick. Uh, so we're going to go upstairs and strain this. Some of you may have purchased raw yogurt from a local farm before and it'll come like this, very liquidy. Most supermarket yogurts are Greek style. So if we want to turn this into Greek style yogurt, what we have to do is strain it. That will concentrate the protein and make it reminiscent of what we are used to. So here I just have a strainer, another pot. I'm going to use two kitchen towels. Uh, you could use a couple layers of cheesecloth, but it's important that this is really fine because you know this is almost a liquid. If you use a normal strainer here without something that's really, really fine, it's just all gonna leak through and it's not going to separate. So we take our yogurt and we pour it in here and it's not gonna really look like it's going down. If it looks like it's going down, your strainer isn't fine enough. So this is going to sit, you know, overnight. Normally it only takes a few hours and then we'll have some Greek style yogurt. Our yogurt has sat overnight and if we look in the pot, it's this translucent white liquid that is known as the whey. Uh, you could use this for fermentations. It's great for pickling vegetables, various marinades. A lot of farmers feed this to the animals as a byproduct, pretty much water with a bunch of protein in it. But what's on top is what we want. So we have the much thicker yogurt. And I'm gonna scoop this into a bowl. And this is what I get from half a gallon of milk. You know, so a lot of these dairy farmers are overcharging for yogurt. So just buy the raw milk from them and make it yourself. Both of these in the fridge a couple hours and then we'll taste them. So our yogurt has cooled in the fridge overnight. Uh, for those of you that don't know, you know, yogurt is a lot looser at room temperature, but when it's colder, you know, it's nice and thick. So we're gonna give this a shot, see how it tastes. The flavor is definitely correct. This is a bit lumpy, so what I would do is pass all of this yogurt through, you know, a not so fine strainer, mix it up together, and then you'll have this nice homogenous yogurt with a, a more desirable texture. Uh, so if I could do another additional step, definitely strain this again to smooth out the texture. And what I usually do when I have yogurt is I'll add like a tablespoon or two of honey. I'll add a little bit of cinnamon powder, some vanilla powder, really makes it approachable and uh, something good for gaining weight, especially if you want to, you know, increase the palatability and eat more of something. You know, as we spoke about earlier, the only nutrients you might be missing if you're only eating a lot of yogurt, you know, preformed omega-3s and some iron. Uh, the macronutrient profile of yogurt is pretty balanced in fat, protein, and uh, carbohydrates. Uh, you know, if you're consuming yogurt as an energy source, it might not work because the yogurt is fairly high in protein. So if you do need carbs, if you do need fat for energy, then maybe opt for, you know, cream or butter or, you know, something else. Maybe add a bit more honey to the yogurt because, you know, yogurt, cheese, milk are fairly balanced from a macronutrient standpoint. They're pretty much complete foods that can be eaten on their own. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me. Hopefully some of you try this out. If you guys would like to support me further, definitely check out my book, The Ancestral Indigenous Diet, down in the description below. Uh, we might do a video, you know, speaking about a farm next week. So any of you guys interested in working on a farm, you know, know how to operate a farm, you're interested in funding it, uh, let me know because I really want to provide you guys with, you know, high quality raw dairy products, um, high quality, you know, grain free pasture raised eggs. And frankly, I'm tired of paying for this raw dairy myself. So. Really looking forward to that. We might be able to make it happen this year. Uh, if we can't, it'll be next year. But I know a lot of you guys are, you know, really bugging me and anticipating this. So, you know, waiting another year and a half, two years for dairy isn't something a lot of you guys want to do. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Leave Frankie Boy a comment below, all that good stuff. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I'm just starving, so we're gonna have a little bit of 
dairy free coconut milk yogurt and I just love this stuff. It tastes just like real yogurt. I mean, I mean not like not like real yogurt. It's just like so creamy and delicious and milky. No, no, not milky. It's like uh it's really tasty. Oh my god, guys, this feels so familiar. I I can't think of what it reminds me of. I I just can't put my tongue on it. But I feel like I do this a lot. 